Hello. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining me today. Um, I'm Sierra Bush, and I'm the founder of Creative Edge Travel. And today we're going to talk about using trains and buses in Italy. Um, we're just going to give everyone a few minutes to filter in here. So hang with me for a sec. So while we're waiting for others to join, um, just kind of a disclaimer here. This is my first webinar I've ever done. So um, you'll see me refer to my notes and um, might be a little bit nervous, but I'm going to try to have fun with it and jump in. Um, I'm facing this fear because I really believe in helping people have more meaningful travel experiences by getting off the beaten path in Italy. So i um, really excited to uh, kind of go through the logistics of that. So you can talk about all these amazing uh, hidden villages, but how do you actually get there if you're traveling on your own? So that's what we're going to cover today. And let's see, we've got a few people coming. Hi, Linda. Good to see you. Thanks for tuning in. Um, Linda, I have a question for you. Um, have you used trains and buses to get around Italy? I know that you spend a lot of time there, so I'm curious. You can just leave a comment to answer. And anyone else that joins, I would like to know how many of you um, have used trains and buses in Italy or plan to on an upcoming trip um, while we're waiting for some more people to show. Let's see. So, um, by the way, this that painting up oh, that way. Oh, there we go. This painting here is of the Amalfi Coast that I did. So that's one of my hidden hobbies <laughs> when I have time, which in the past couple of years hasn't really happened much. But um, okay, I think we'll we'll go ahead and get started here and let people come in as they as they can. Um, okay, so like I mentioned, um, I'm Sierra Bush. I'm the founder of Creative Edge Travel, and. Um, my mission is really to, like I said before, to help people have more meaningful travel experiences, to really connect with the locals on a deeper level. And so um, actually, when I first went to Italy as a student, um, <laughs> I had, up until that point, I'd never really been in a place where you needed to use buses or any mode of trans public transportation. Um, we took a car everywhere we went. There was always a parking spot available. Life was easy. <laughs> but um, when I was in Rome, uh, the first city that we were in for a few days as is on my study abroad program, um, we had some free time and they were just like, yeah, like go do whatever you want, meet back here at this time. And it seemed really casual and cool, but I was freaking out because I had no idea like how to get around or even the concept of, um, of the subway system. I had no idea even the first step how to figure it out. So I basically glued myself to any group of students that knew where they were going, even if I had no interest in going where they were headed. So um, <laughs> since then, I have done a ton of traveling in Italy and I, I don't know why, but I've always felt so drawn to the off the beaten path places where the culture hasn't changed to please tourists, where you can really just walk in and see how they live their everyday life. And so to, to have those experiences, I had to learn how to use trains and buses and get myself to those hidden villages. So I've gone through all the steps of getting lost, getting on the bus, going in the wrong direction, um, all the horror stories. <laughs> and so I've kind of compiled it all into a guide that is going to help you guys not have, not have those fears and feel more confident when you're um, heading off on your off the beaten path journey. So um, let's see. So by the end of the webinar, you're going to know how, um, you know, step by step, how to buy your ticket. Um, how to get on the train or bus, and how to get off the train or bus, which sounds pretty self-explanatory, but there are a few things that if you didn't know about ahead of time could trip you up. So we're going to cover all of that. Um, and before I get started, I just want to mention that I did include a link to a freebie download um, in the description of the video. So um, definitely check that out. It's 
it's going to cover everything that I'm going to cover today, but it's going to have a lot more bonus tips. It's going to have a section of useful phrases in Italian to know, which are going to be really key, um, and some other things I'll mention along the way. So I've um, got some people showing up here. Hi, guys. Uh, Linda says she did take the train to Cinque Terre, and she hiked in Avanto. Um, took her forever to learn how to scan her pass, and then followed a group of Americans and boarded the wrong train. Uh-oh. Drove around Puy on my own. Awesome. I'm very impressed with myself, even though I got lost. Yep. Sometimes getting lost is good, right? But sometimes you really have a place you want to go. Um, and when you're using transportation, it public transportation, you you want to know that you're going to get where you're going and be safe. So awesome. Thank you for sharing that, Linda. Um, okay, so getting started. The golden rule to um, <laughs> the golden rule to off the beaten path travel is ask, ask, ask. And that means in every step, make sure you ask someone if you, to confirm that you're correct. So even if you think okay, it looks like it's going to be this train and I need to go there. If you know what you're doing, ask anyway, because one out of three times you're going to be wrong um, and you just can't um, catch every mistake. So get used to asking, whether it's in English or Italian, you'll be surprised by how many people speak English. So we're going to start with trains um, and how to get your ticket. So you can either buy online or at the station. Uh, personally, I like to just show up at the station and buy the ticket there, but I recently learned that the price can be a bit higher at the station. It kind of depends how far in advance you're buying it. So um, the reasons to buy online would be if you want to secure the cheaper price, um, if you're booking a high-speed train, or if you're booking uh, an overnight train. Otherwise, you're totally fine to show up at the station and buy a ticket there. Um, <clears throat> so. Once you know whether you want to buy at the station or online, you can check the bus, the train schedules at trainitalia.com. So that's T R E N I T A L I A.com. And that's going to be in the freebie download as well. Um, so when you go to trainitalia.com, um, you will put in your origin and your destination. And one really important tip. Um, the destin the the villages the stations that you type in they need to be in Italian so rather than Rome you would need to put Roma uh, another thing is that they are often abbreviated right so uh, Napoli Centrale would actually be like Nap and then C point T R L E or something crazy which you would have no way of knowing so what I advise is before you go to the station, before you buy your ticket, just Google train station of X village or city. Um, that way you know the, the right name to look for when you're buying your ticket. Also, sometimes the, the train stations, villages are combined. So when I go to Cortona, which, by the way, is where I studied abroad, um, it's actually Camuchia Cortona because it's kind of between two different villages, Camuchia and Cortona. So if I go to search Cortona when I'm buying my ticket, nothing comes up. So that's why you need to search uh, the name of the station before you go to buy your ticket. Okay, so um, when you get to the station, if you decide to buy your ticket at the station, when you get there, you just need to look for the machines, um, their red, gray, and green, and there's a picture of it in the guide that you can download, uh, so you'll know what to look for. And the machine, you can choose to, um, to buy your ticket in English, so that way it's really easy, you know what you're doing. Um, and let's see, next thing. Okay, so once you have your ticket, the next thing is getting on the train. So you have your ticket, you're in the train station, um, you're going to look for the big display board that has the arrivals and departures, and you're going to look at departures, and you need to match uh, the train number, the destination, and the time that's on your ticket with uh, the different trains showing up on the departures board. Keep in mind, if you're really early, it might not show up yet. You might have to wait a little bit. Um, so. You're going to look for, <laughs> it's a little bit complicated here, but I'm going to walk you through it. So you're going to look for your destination and your train number, 
The problem is sometimes the train number is not on the ticket. Um, this happens a lot if it's, um, you know, if it's not a high speed train or overnight train and uh, it's not really specific, you don't need a, a really, you don't need a, um, what do you call it, a seat reservation. So it's kind of open ended. That's the best guess I have for why they don't always put the train number. But in that case, you need to use the destination and the time of departure. And there should only be one train at the same time leaving for the same place. So you kind of use your context clues and work it out that way. But again, ask to be sure that you figured out the right train to get on. So you're gonna match your destination, your train number, and the departure time with the departures at board um, and ask, to make sure that you have found it correctly. So once you locate the same, the right train on the board, you need to find which platform to go to. And an Italian platform is Binario, but um, I think it's written in English as well, so no worries there. Um, so you're gonna look for the right Binario, and then you're gonna go to that platform. Now to get to the platform, Sometimes, you know, if you're sitting here and you're, there are all these different platforms and yours is over here, rather than cross across all of them, which is illegal, you might need to go down the stairs, walk under the tracks, and then come back up. Uh, so that's called the Soto Passaggio, or underpass, basically. So you need to find a sign that says Soto Passaggio, and there's usually an icon of stairs and um, if all else fails, just ask, how do you get to this platform? Okay, so you have your ticket, you know which platform to go to, and now uh, you get to the platform and you're waiting on your train. So when the train comes, you need to validate your ticket. Um, so there are machines either at the beginning of the platform or along the platform that allow you to put your ticket in and it stamps the time and place and date. So that way the train attendants know where you got on and just make sure you, that you're legit. Um, sometimes these, um, these uh, what do you call it, validation machines, they don't work occasionally, especially at smaller stations, but don't worry, all you need to do when the train gets there, a lot of train attendants will step off to help people get off and back on. And you just need to at, tell one of them that the machine's not working, they'll sign it and that'll make you official. All right, so now you're on the train. Um, also wanted to mention that in the freebie download, um, there is an example departures board and tickets with everything kind of indicated so you'll know like where to find the information that you need. Okay. All right, so you're on the train. Enjoy train travel. This is actually one of my favorite things to do is ride around Europe, like super long train rides in Europe when I can take a nap, I can look out the window and daydream, and most of all, journal. Like, put me on a train, I'll be writing all day. I love journaling and writing interesting articles and things while I'm moving across Europe. So enjoy the ride, um, but be careful if you take a nap. Obviously, don't leave your bags in the seat next to you. Um, and I recommend setting an alarm uh, at least 15 minutes before you're supposed to arrive at your destination so you don't uh, wake up way further than you meant to go. Um, the announcements will be in English and Italian, so you're set. Um, and there's usually also a display screen on each car that shows the next uh, station coming up. And then to be sure, when you're arriving, um, there are white and blue signs that say the name of each station. So before you even pull in, there should be a few and then another one right there at the station. So you can glance out the window, make sure you're at the right place. And awesome, so now you've gotten to your destination. Um, what if you got on the wrong train? Um, first, take a deep breath. We're gonna think through it step by step. And what really helps me in a moment of crisis like that, because it's super easy to panic, right? You're in a foreign country, you don't really know where you are. Um, but just think about what the worst case scenario is. So worst comes to worst, I stay the night here and figure it out in the morning, you know? Like, it's not really that big a deal. It's not life or death, so. Um, just realize that you can work yourself out of it. You can do hard things um, and go to the ticket office and ask for help. 
Um, at smaller stations, sometimes the um, ticket office is non-existent or out to lunch a lot of the time. So what I recommend is to use the, uh, the ticket machine. So the same ticket machines that were in the big station that you started at, they'll also be at all these smaller stations. So just use the ticket machine, put in as if you were just starting your journey from that place, put in your destination and it'll show you all, you know, it'll show you from there how you would get, which train you would take to get to where you actually want to go. So you just start from square one and you make it through. All right, so that's that's the train session uh, section. So that's how you navigate train travel. There are some more details and more tips in the uh, freebie download, but that's kind of all I wanted to cover right now. Uh, does anyone have any questions? Happy to answer. Hi, Priya. Oh, I didn't see you guys tuning in. Hi, Lindsay. So happy to see you guys. Okay. If you have any questions at any point, just put them in the comments and I will answer. Okay. I did have a couple people send me questions in advance. So one person asked, are seats assigned? It's a really good question. Most of the time, even if seats are assigned, it's rare that people pay attention, but um, really only if it's a high speed train or an overnight train, especially overnight because sometimes there's a bed, you know, so that is kind of important. But otherwise, seats are not really assigned. Just sit where you want, and if somebody wants their assigned seat, they'll let you know, but it's never happened to me. Um, another person asked, how long does the train stop at each station for you to get on and off? This always freaks me out a little bit because I always think I have less time than I do. Um, but I make sure to go, so between the train cars, there's kind of a section where you have the doors to get on and off the train. So the stop before mine, I go ahead and get my luggage and I head to that, that area where I can easily get off when we arrive. So that way I don't have to worry about it. So they, did, they don't stop a really long time, maybe two minutes, a minute, I'm not sure. Not very long, um, but the best thing is just to be prepared. And another bonus tip I want to share is using Google Maps. So you can actually download uh, offline maps so that you can access them offline. And that way you can kind of put in like going from here to here and you'll be able to follow your dot on the on Google Maps and see when you're getting close to where you're trying to go. So that way you know it's coming up and you don't have to rely on like a different language or, you know, asking people. You, you can see right there how close you are. So, all right. Oh yeah, there was one other question. Are there bathrooms on trains? <laughs> so there are bathrooms on trains and the golden rule is not to use the bathroom when you're stopped at a station because they empty right on the tracks and uh, it's not very polite to the people at that station. Um, but yes, there are bathrooms. I make a habit of not using them just because the idea freaks me out. But I have, um, I have used it before and some are great and some are what you would expect. <laughs> but yes, if you have an emergency, there is a place to go for that. Okay, so if we don't have any other questions about using trains, I'm going to move on to buses, which is pretty quick here. Um, basic concept. <clears throat> All right. So again, the golden rule for buses is the same as trains. So always ask somebody to make sure you're in the right place. And sometimes if they don't seem very certain, I ask someone else too. Sometimes they're like, yeah, I think so. And it's like, oh, you know, that's not really an answer. So, <laughs> um, so getting your ticket. Um, you can usually buy a bus ticket on board. Sometimes you can't. So um, it's always safe to buy it beforehand. Another reason to buy it beforehand is that it's more expensive to buy it on board. So to buy your ticket, the easiest place is to go to a Tabaki. And Tabaki, it's named that way because of the primary product it used to sell years and you know ages ago, uh, which is tobacco. So tobacco, sorry, to <laughs> tobacco, tabaki. Um, 
And these are really common everywhere in Italy. You'll see a sign that has a T on it, and there's a picture of that again in the downloadable guide, um, so you can recognize it. Um, so it's kind of like a convenience shop that sells cigarettes and lottery tickets and snacks and that kind of thing, um, and also bus tickets. So you can go to the Tabaki and tell them where you want to go, and they will print up a ticket for you. Um, while you're there, ask where the bus stop is and which side of the street. It's really important that you get on the correct side of the street. Too many times, because I didn't grow up thinking about how public transportation and directions work, um, I've just gone to the bus stop without thinking, like, the, the bus that passes, is that going to be going in the direction that I need to go? I know it sounds crazy, but you guys, I grew up in North Georgia. You can see the forest outside my window. Um, so ask which side of the street is the correct side for the direction that you want to go. Um, again, the Italian phrases for this are in that guide, so you'll be set. Um, when the bus is arriving, you'll see on the front it'll have the bus number and uh, the final destination, or some actually have like all the stops that are kind of scrolling across. Um, but one thing I wanted to mention to back up a sec, uh, the bus stop, what it looks like. It's basically a pole, like a street sign, and it has different signs on it. At the top, it has a white sign with orange um, squares with the bus numbers in it. So you can see all the buses that stop there. And the other things on it are the bus schedules. Um, the bus schedules, they are really, fr <laughs> they always really frustrate me because um, it's just hard to, they're really hard to understand. Um, but maybe that, again, is just me not having grown up using <laughs> public transportation. Um, but there is an example of one in the guide, and I did kind of break down how to use it. But the thing is that at the end of the day, uh, in the fine print, it always says, you know, um, you know, there are certain festivals or like market days. So it's very specific to the place. Um, and your best bet is really <laughs> to take a picture of it and ask somebody else, go back to the Tabaki and ask them because they're used to selling bus tickets, you know, so they're more likely to know and be able to help you. So um, let's see where we're at. All right, so the bus has arrived. Now we're getting on the bus. Um, so you want to show your drive, show the driver the map. So whether it's a real map or on your phone, just show him where you're going to go. You don't have to say anything. They're used to people just pointing. They know what you mean. So show them where you want to go. Make sure you're on the right bus. Um, and then you can also ask them to let you know when you get to that stop. Now, some bus drivers are more friendly than others, but most of the time, they're really friendly and really happy to help. So just kind of always stick up near the front by the driver. And if it's been a while and I'm getting concerned about if he remembers or not, I ask again, like, hey, is it coming up? Um, so always show the driver your map and where you want to go to make sure you're going the right direction. And then always um, ask him or her to um, let you know when your stop is coming up or when you get there. That way, you don't have to worry about getting on the wrong bus in the wrong direction. Um, okay, so just like on the trains, you have to validate your ticket. Um, usually right behind the driver, there's a machine for validating or towards the middle of the bus. You just stick it in, it stamps it, and you're good to go. Um, just watch the locals do what they do. Um, yes, so I talked about this before. Know where your stop is. My biggest tip, again, is to download Google Maps offline. So before you take your trip um, or before you leave your hotel in the morning while you still have Wi-Fi, download the map for where you're going to go, and that way you can still have access to, um, to figuring out where you are and you know being able to see live where you are and where you want to go and knowing where you're at. Um, and there are instructions for downloading offline maps in the freebie download. <clears throat> Okay, so getting off the bus, this is the part that I told you was uh, self-explanatory, but there was actually a few things to note. So um, again, going back to being a country girl and having no idea how public transportation works, um, 
actually when I moved to New York City, I lived in New Jersey and there was this really sketchy, <laughs> they called it the gypsy bus. I'm not even kidding guys. Some of you guys know what I'm talking about. Um, so there's a gypsy bus that goes from Manhattan at Times Square to, um, to New Jersey. And it's just like a really old school bus where they've taken out all the seats and like crammed them even closer together so they can make more money per trip. And it's, it's a real scene guys. But anyway, to get off, you have to actually yell next stop, please. And I was so shy and I, you know, I really am an introvert. I've worked on myself a lot, but, um, it took a lot for me to just yell out from the back of this crowded bus that I wanted to get off for the next stop. So luckily that's not how it works in Italy, but just to show you how I've had to learn how public transportation works, how you have to think about how to let them know where to get off. Um, so in Italy, it's either, uh, <laughs> it's either a, a button that says stop and they're located on the poles. So you know how usually buses have poles that you can hold on to if you're standing. So those kind of poles, they usually have a button that says stop. Uh, so you just push it and re it requests a stop and usually it'll show on the screen stop requested. So that way you know that the driver knows. Otherwise, along the windows, there is, um, what do you call it? Uh, like a pulley. I had a word for this. Hold on. Where are my notes? Um, a cord. Yeah. So there's like a cord that's running along the windows and you pull it. And the same thing. It'll show that stop has been requested. Okay. So you got off the bus and hopefully you're in the right destination and you're ready to explore. Um, but if you got on the bus going in the wrong direction, um, all you need to do is cross the street because that way you would hit the buses going back where you came from. Um, find the closest stop. So the stops are usually you know, going in both directions. The stops are in the same location. Um, so find the stop and you read the schedule to find out when the next bus is passing. Um, and again, take a picture of it. Go, in, go into a tabaki store and let them help you. All right. So those are the basics, but there are um, a, lot, a lot more tips um, and more detail in the freebie download. download. Um, and it's, you know, it seems, it might seem like a lot of work <laughs> rather than going, I don't know, it might seem complicated, but uh, it's really worth it to get to experience a place that like I mentioned before, hasn't been set up for tourists. So um, where you can just see how they live their everyday life and feel like you are making your own discoveries as well. So it's not in the, all the guidebooks. It's not, um, you know, there's not a big list of museums and things to go to. You're just there. You don't know much about the place. And you're just, to me, that is total freedom and happiness, being in a new place in Europe and, um, seeing what amazing, beautiful places and people I can find. Um, so it's totally worth getting off the beaten path where you can have more meaningful travel experiences. Um, and I hope after this webinar and downloading the freebie, you will feel so much more confident and prepared to journey further off the beaten path and maybe step outside your comfort zone a little bit. Um, and hopefully not be like me and glue yourself to people that are going to do things that you're not interested in take charge of your own destiny as cheesy as that sounds um you got to follow like your own whim and your own interests and all of that so um does anyone have questions about buses or going back to trains or anything related to italy or me oh sorry you are you guys are posing questions okay I'm not used to facebook live all right lindsay what has been your favorite train ride oh my gosh Oh, um, I think going from Austria into Italy was freaking amazing. Like, it's, to me, every day in Italy, there's something that happens where you're just like, of course that's happening. It's, you know, it's Italy because it's just like a movie. Um, and, okay, so the train ride from Austria was big big mountains and these 
super scenic villages just like perched on top of a mountain with a lake below it. And you just keep passing these incredibly breathtaking places, but you only see it for like five seconds or less, you know. Um, so the whole train ride was like that, and it was just incredible. So I went from Austria to the Dolomite Mountains in northern Italy, and uh, so gorgeous. All right, so that's probably my favorite train ride ever. Um, hi, Belma. Thanks for joining. Hi, Yana. You guys rock. Um, Priya, do they allow bus transfers with the same ticket? Oh, that's a really good question. So, the yes, the bus tickets and – yeah, the bus tickets are um, – timed so you basically have like 90 minutes to do whatever you want to do um during uh that time limit um can you get a day pass or a weekly one that covers the whole city transport yes um yeah it's going to depend on which city that you're going to but especially the main cities they they all have um programs you know for three-day passes, week passes, whatever it is. And then there's also something called the Euro, Euro Rail. <laughs> I had a speech impediment when I was young and I couldn't say my R's. Sometimes that pops up again. <laughs> so Euro Rail. Um, so if you are going to be doing a whole lot of travel by train, it's worth it. Um, but it, it depends, you know, I've never really done it because I've never taken that many trips. Um, I like to stay in one place longer. But yeah, Yana, to answer your question, there are totally passes that you can buy and look into. Good question. Any other questions? Okay, if you have a question, pop it in and I'll answer it. We're almost done here. So I just wanted to review... Um, the download for the freebie, if you missed it at the beginning, is in the description link. Um, so you should be able to do that without a problem. Um, next, oh yeah, so um, next month we're going to do uh, top experiences you can't miss in Southern Italy. So I actually lived in, in, in Puglia, Southern Italy for uh, a few months and I went back this year. Uh, we're, I'm leading a trip there in May and June, Secrets of Southern Italy and another one called Mysteries of Matera. Um, so it's really one of my favorite regions because it's just so raw and rustic and um, so different from what you expect out of Italy. I think Americans, we really always think of Tuscany and it's amazing because in Southern Italy, you still have the essential elements that make it feel like a trip in Italy, but you have all these surprising, unexpected things too. So it's really special. Um, so we're, I'm going to share the top experiences you can't miss in Southern Italy. So um, if, you, if you want to make sure that you are in the know about our upcoming webinars, just let me know in the comments and I'll get in touch and hook you up. Um, okay, so in this webinar, I told you how to get your ticket, how to get on the train or bus, and how to get off the train and bus, and what to do if you get on the wrong train or bus. So again, I hope you feel really confident and ready to get off the beaten path. And um, don't forget to check out the freebie so you can get those extra tips that are really going to make the process so much easier. Um, and let me know in the comments if this webinar was helpful and if you have any other topics you would like me to do a webinar about, please let me know. I really want ideas and, you know, I'm here to um, share my knowledge with you. My mission is really just to help people have more meaningful travel experiences and get off the beaten path, step outside your comfort zone a little bit where you can learn you know, not just the beauty of the place, but the challenges they face as well. And I really think in human-centered um, travel, travel that's focused on human connection, you learn about yourself as well and kind of what possibilities exist for how you can choose to live your life as well. So that's why I'm out here doing what I do. So <laughs> um, let me know how I can help you guys achieve that. All right. Oh, wait, there's some more questions. <laughs> um, is there a visitor's train pass package that I can buy over the Internet? Uh, yes, yeah, so that's probably what I mentioned before, the, um, the Euro route. That's what you want to look at. 
Uh, Lindsay, you signed up for future notifications when you go live. Thank you so much. That's awesome. Appreciate it. Uh, thanks for the tips. I'll use them this fall and winter. Good. So glad that you're spending more time in Italy, Linda. That's awesome. Okay. I will sign off here. Thank you guys so much. This has been really fun. And even though I've never done a webinar and I avoided doing webinars for such a long time because it was really intimidating, I had a lot of fun. So thank you guys so much for showing up and um, catch you next time. Ciao. Ciao. Buonasera.